welcome to The Knitting Game and Other Stuff. I'm your host, Leslie, and this is episode 52 for February 13th, 2013. Um, this, I promise, is going to be a short show. Uh, I've been kind of busy with real life stuff this week, so it's been a different week for me. I haven't had a lot of of my knitting time and crafting time. I changed my schedule at work. So on Mondays, on Monday this week, I did a 12 hour day. And then the rest of the days this week, I work an eight hour day. And last week I had Friday off. So that's, I do a flex schedule so I can have every other Friday off. So with the working 12 hours on Monday, I only have to be at work for eight hours every other, you know, the rest of the week which that extra hour, it saves me because I was working nine hour days. That extra hour, leaving an hour earlier, saves me about two hours every day sitting in traffic, if you can believe that. So if I left at 2.30, I wouldn't get home until 4.30. And if I leave at 1.30, I can be like down at the gym by three, uh, home probably about 2.30, 2.45. So you can see the difference it makes. So I've been playing around with my schedule. So I've been super duper busy this week. And I've gotten a lot of real world stuff accomplished. Like I'm playing WoW or something. In real life. IRL. Um, so that's my excuse this week. Uh, my show notes are in an envelope. Uh, I don't think there, there won't be any show notes. But I will have voting. Because, of course, there's voting. So I will have that up. So let's get to it. My name is Leslie. I want to thank you for coming by and hanging out. Uh, I've been at this now for a little over a year. And I'm having a bunch of fun. So, first of all, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, if you want to read my show notes... I usually have them. This is an irregularity, I promise you, if you're new. Uh, and those contain links to my projects, links to the vendors that I use, links to anything I find helpful, patterns, um, anything like that. Unfortunately, not this week. I don't have much to talk about, so I didn't really see the point of putting up links. So the blog where you can find my show notes and my shower thoughts and anything else that comes out of my brain, you can find that at myordinaryjourney.com. It's all one word right there. So myordinaryjourney.com. So I'm not used to not having my structure. Maybe I just, whatever. So, um... Also, you will find on the show notes links to our Ravelry group. We do have a Ravelry group. It is growing nicely. And I wanted to say welcome to our two newest members. So we have Atomic Jen. That is Jen. And we have So Delighted. And that's Colleen. So, ladies, welcome to the group. I hope you're enjoying the show. And I hope, I really do hope that you guys, um, learn something or like something and that you come back because I, I just I like to know that you guys are out there and you're like my knitting buddies and I hear from you guys and I'm you know it's nice to know what everybody's working on it feels like my own you know I hear a lot of folks saying that the podcasters and the podcasts that are out there are like their knit group well y'all are like my knit group because that, you know, on Plurk, if you're on Plurk, please Plurk me. Um, that would be awesome. And I follow you guys all the time, and I love to see what you guys are working on. And when you friend me on Ravelry, I stalk your favorites and the projects you're working on because, well, you guys have great taste, and I like to see what everybody's working on. So I do that. Uh, and, again, it's all on the blog, so you can – it's pretty – self-explanatory it's out there so our we had our welcomes I'm gonna mark this stuff off so birthdays this is I, I always like wishing everybody a happy birthday because who doesn't like to have a happy birthday well 
I don't know if I'm gonna like to have a hat well a happy birthday on the 40th but I, I kind of want to be 39 forever I haven't gotten there yet and I'm kind of starting to freak out about it already so yeah anyway birthday we have La La Payasha La Payasa and that's Melinda I'm sorry if I kind of butchered that um, Nitastic and that's Susie and Zoo Kyla and that's Carolyn so hi everybody and happy birthday uh, I don't have any apps I I've been doing a segment on Android apps that help you with knitting I don't have one of those this week another reason why I don't have my show notes and I'm not very well prepared is because today was crazy uh, I got to work I did my morning report as soon as I got that out the door, I woofed down some breakfast, like my little cup of oatmeal. I get the Quaker Oats, like Sensational Delights oatmeal in the cup. So I had like peach and almond oatmeal this morning. And I heated that up and I woofed it down. And then I had to run like across the building to get to, tra I had training today and it was from 8.30 to 12.30. And we got out of there early out of the training room early so I was able to make my noon meeting which lasted from noon to one so as soon as I got done with that meeting um, I woofed down some lunch that I heated up my lean cuisine and then it was time to go because I leave at 1 30 because I get in at 5 30 so I had like no time in front of the computer at all today at all so this is the first time I've really had to sit and think about the show today and I usually do my show notes on Wednesday at lunch and I just didn't have one today so what everybody's here for is the knitting game the last seven weeks we've been at this I have been presenting an American Idol style where everybody gets to vote for as many patterns as they want as many times as they want and the lower two patterns are the ones that I choose between for who gets sent home. Now sent home just means that you, you get pit in the queue and I'm going to arrange everything. This is prioritizing my uh, gifted patterns um, that I started with. I've got a few more since then. So I'm trying to prioritize my queue because I want to knit some of these gifted patterns. So we've been at this for seven weeks now and I will be announcing the finalists tonight. Oh, so I feel like I should have confetti and balloons next week. So, all right. So the three, I'm going to kind of do this a little different, but the three contestants this week was the, were, gosh, my grammar's horrible. The three contestants this week were the Vittorio. The Water Street Cardigan. And the Four Good Hat. Alright, so the two patterns that placed in the lower placed the lowest this week, the la the bottom two, were the Water Street Cardigan and the Four Good Hat. All right, so um, just to mix it up just a little bit, I thought I'd throw some drama into the mix. So the pattern that's going home this week is going to be the For Good Hat. And it's very interesting. And I'll tell you why I did this. I tell you guys to vote as many times as you want for as many patterns as you want and um, I'll let you into the little secret the four good hat was like the front runner through the whole competition and I think folks that liked it just didn't vote for it this week and it's like the the big star has just been sent home and it's just oh, so scandalous right so I I'm kind of trying to mix it up a little bit. So the four good hat is going to go into the queue. So the finalists, so you get to pick between the next two. And 
one of these will be my very next knit that I eventually get to. Um, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Is the Vittorio and the Water Street cardigan. So this is going to be, this is round eight. This is the final round of the pattern prioritization knitting game. So it's very exciting. We're almost at the end of this. We've been doing it for two months. You guys have been outstanding. And um, next week I will have some time and I'm going to do up some numbers because I like to show numbers. And I think you guys are going to be really surprised at how the voting went from week to week, from pattern to pattern, and the overall vote that a pattern got throughout it, the course of its history. So what I'll do is I'll average that out to kind of make it, you know, if it got like 700 votes each week and it was in for eight weeks, you know, I'm not going to put that up against, you know, the first pattern that went out with a hundred votes, you know, that just 14,000 votes or however many I can't add. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get into a little, some, some, some numbers cause I kind of like number. I love playing with numbers. So I'm going to present that a little bit next week. I think that'll be fun. So the Vittorio and the Water Street cardigan. I'm doing hand gestures and I think it's too low. The camera won't pick it up. So I'm trying to do my hand gestures up here. <laughs> and I know I look so goofy, but I will. So the Vittorio and the Water Street cardigan are up for the vote next week, this week for round eight. Um, and... Uh, voting will close on February 20th, a week from today, and I'll record again. So that's what you get for the knitting game. Uh, some updates on some prior knitting game winners that I've still got going. Uh, haven't ripped out the section of the Sayuri sweater yet. I'll probably get to that this week. I haven't figured out where the heck I am in the Easy Camping 100th Anniversary Half Circle Shawl. I think I'm just going to uh, bite the bullet and jump in on that one and figure out where, just pick a spot. I think I know which row it is. I'm just going to go with it. And if it's screwed up, I'll fudge it. It'll be okay. And then the final one is the exotic uh, draped ruffle. And I saw some yarn this week on webs that was a little bit of inexpensive. And then I started to think, holy crap, I have some beaded yarn that I spun in my stash. It was um, a braid of merino that I spun up. It was from Spunky Eclectic. It was one of the club uh, shipments. I believe it was February shipment last year or maybe January's. One of the first ones I got. And it's blue, yellow, and black. And I have it stashed away. But what I ended up doing is... Um, it's kind of thick and thin, um, and it's really loosely spun in some parts. It's pretty fluffy. And what I ended up doing is I pre-strung, or I had my daughter pre-string, uh, some glass beads onto gold thread. And I plied the yarn, the single, with this thread with the beads, and I flipped the beads up into the yarn. So I have beaded yarn. Duh. So I'm thinking I might, um, it's not the right weight, but I'm not too concerned about gauge. I think it's the idea. So I'm going to take the idea and I'm going to roll with it. So we'll see how that goes. I always do better when I knit with my hand spun anyway. Those projects seem to fly off the needle. So we'll see what happens. I have some other like black, it's like a lace weight black yarn with iridescent threads running through it. I picked it up in a, in a D stash. It's a universal yarn, I think, but I'll show you next week. And that one's kind of fuzzy. So the two yarns that are used in the exotic drape ruffle, one is sequins and beads and one is fuzzy. So it's not the silk it calls for it's wool, but I think it'll work. I think we'll see. So that's it for the knitting game update. So on to my knitting. This week, sort of unintentionally, I've been monogamous. 
So I'm going to start with the finished object first. Yay, I have one. So um, it's my devil in a blue dress socks. And I knit these toe up. And I did the afterthought heel right here. And I'll tell you, I really did a good job, if I do say so myself. I did a pretty decent job with getting the heels placed. I paid very close attention because I wanted a matching pair. Usually it doesn't bother me if it's matchy matchy, but this time I did. I wanted a matching pair just to see if I could do it. And I did. Um, I don't like the length of the heel. Uh, it pops out. Really kind of sticks out really bad. I could have probably ended the heel with the light blue color here instead of getting into the another dark blue stripe. Uh, but live and learn, right? So next time I'll only decrease until I have 12 stitches on the needle instead of eight. I think that'll help. Um, these have not been washed. They have not been blocked. They have been worn. I wore these Monday. I wanted to get these done on Sunday so I could um, wear them to work. So I finished my socks. And these were knit with um, Lollipop Yarns Devil in a Blue Dress. And I knit them on size one and a half. And it was Knit Picks Fixed Circular one and a half. And like I said, I did toe up and I just knit until I wanted to stop. And then I did a three by two ribbing on the cuff and I use Easy's sewn bind off because that's my favorite bind off for the tops of socks. I don't like Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for socks because it kind of looks ruffly to me. All right, so works in progress. Um, the only other thing that I worked on this week and that I'm gonna show you is I'm doing a cool house hat. And this is a Jared Flood pattern. And I've already knit one of these. I knit one out of Into the World. Um, it has cashmere in it. I can't remember what it's called or the colorway. Uh, no, I take that back. The colorway was Amber Crombie. I can't remember the, the name of the base for the yarn. But anyway, um, so a friend of mine at work, one of my coworkers, his wife was diagnosed uh, back over the summer, actually, with um, a pretty rare form of cancer. And she's been going through her chemo treatments and has responded swimmingly. Um, she's doing her final round of chemo starting on Monday. And I wanted to get this done so he could have it for her on Monday. Um, just maybe, hopefully it'll bring her some warmth and for some comfort. She um, didn't lose her hair, so that's good. So it'll just be a nice warm hat. Uh, I started this forever ago when we first found out, when he first shared with the office uh, that what, it, what was going on. And... Um, I just, I wanted to do something. So this is out of Nick Picks Brava. It's their 100% um, acrylic. It's in the, it's a worsted weight or maybe even a bulky weight. I can't remember. I'm very bad at this tonight. Uh, and I know they're Knit Picks uh, size 16 or they're a 16 inch length and they're the, just the interchangeables and I believe they're size eight. So I'm almost done with the body of the hat. I have like four more rows of the crisscross pattern before I start to decrease. And my goal is to have this to them by Monday. So that means I won't be able to show the finished object on the show. So I'll take a picture and I'll insert it next week. Hopefully I'll have it finished. All right, so that was the knitting. And if you hear that buzzing sound, it's because my phone is on silent, but I got a phone call and it's probably from the kids' school telling me, hey, if they're going to be out on Friday to make sure you send a note. I'm like, it's President's Day. I'm not getting Friday off. I'm getting Monday off. And the kids aren't getting Friday off. They need to be in school. That's what it's there for. 
All right, so spinning. I have some things to show you with spinning. So I was playing around with my drum carter. I don't know if you can see it. It's over here on the bookshelf. And I carded some bats and it's, um, it was like cranberry colored, cranberry and navy blue, um, uh, Cordell. And then I had some purple and some pink silk that I got from Gail's Art from the Tri-Dye Club. And I added that. And then I had some gold Firestar that I picked up at Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I carted up these big fluffy bats. And I just spun. It is slubby. It is thick. It is thin. It's a single. Um, I don't know. I might... I think I'm just going to set the single and um, keep it as a single. And I just had a lot of fun with this spinning of this. It was just a very nice palette cleanser. You know, thick and slubby and just... I just let it go. Let it go. Let it. I cranked up the tension on that sucker so it would... My take up, it would just suck it right on in and... So I had fun with this. I'm thinking I might sell this though on the shop because it is so, I don't know. I think a hand, I made the bat, I made the yarn. I think that's fun and I have more so I can make myself some more yarn. Um, I don't know how many yards it is. I haven't pulled it, you know, I haven't pulled it off the bobbin and I haven't set the twist yet. My guess, I probably have anywhere, I would say conservatively, 150 yards. And it is thick and it is thin. I have some, some spots here that are a lace weight and I have some spots here that are definitely a bulky weight. So I'm going to let you guys see that really well. Hopefully... The light is good. I don't know. So hopefully you can see how the colors play out. So that's one. That is the, that's finished. I'm not going to do any more with that except for setting the twist. I finished spinning up my blueberry smoothie. And you can see pretty well all the colors that have come in it. I don't know why they call it blueberry smoothie. There's only one, you know, one little part of that that's like that purple that reminds me of blueberries. I guess the green could be the blueberry bush and early blueberries because when blueberries first come out, they're kind of green before they turn blue. So this is what I've got. I love that shock of hot pink. So I'm going to um, chain ply this. I'm going to Navajo ply it and see what I come up with. So this was four ounces. So this is, this is probably about three. This is four. I can definitely tell this is heavier. But that also is because of the type of fiber. This is 100% merino and this is like all fluffy and Puffy and but it's still weight wise about four I'd say about three all right so that was my spinning and then sewing I've been playing with some new uh, bag prototypes so this was one that I came up with and the handle is way too wide the proportions are all wrong so the handle is way too wide and it is way too long for the bag. But I do like the proportions for the bag. It's tall rather than wide. And so it's nice and deep. Um, so it would be really good for a large cake of yarn that you just were gonna stuff down in there and have a center pull cake. Um, that would be really good for that. I wouldn't recommend it for um, yarn like lollipop yarn that unwinds from the outside because it gets stuck on the fabric and it just it doesn't flow very smoothly so you're gonna have to pull on it a lot 
So, but for a center pole cake, oh yeah, go to town, man, look at that room. So, um, so this is one of my experiments. So I'm not going to sell this one because it was an experiment. So, um, I get to keep those. So my bag collection grows and grows. And then I couldn't help myself. I went to, um, Joanne's with Stitches Please, Courtney from the Fearless in Her podcast. If you don't know, we are friends in real life. And she swears we saw this fabric. And I'm like, no, I think it was the other kind. And she's like, no, we saw that. But I went by myself the other day and I saw the yoga frogs. <laughs> and I just died loud. I'm like, I had to get it. So yoga frogs went up in the shop Friday. Um, so there's still some yoga frogs left if y'all want it. But um, this again was a play on doing a more vertical rather than horizontal bag. And it does have the zipper up at the top. It also has the zipper here in the front. It's an outside fully lined zipper pocket in the front. And it's got a reasonable size handle. So it's still a little long, but it is not as crazy as that other one. And it's definitely thinner. It's it's more manageable. And I think it works proportionally to the back. I mean, how cute is that? So that is my Zen Master bag. So I still have the fabric for that in the shop. So if you wanted to order one, for, uh, for purchase, if you want a made to order one, just go ahead and take a look. Um, since I'm working this Friday, I'm not doing a regular shop update with the fabric, but I am at least going to have one pre-made bag. If you guys want some pre-made bags, I was thinking about doing some up on the weekends and putting those up on the shop on the Fridays that I'm not doing a regular shop update or just randomly throughout the week. So this is a bag I have finished. It is a floppy, so you can see it's floppy, and it's a drawstring bag. I haven't put the drawstring in yet, but it's fully lined, again, with the drawstring. And this is, if you can't tell, it's Star Trek. It's the NCC-1701. It is the Star Trek Enterprise. And um, this one, it's, the same in the shop. So I'll have this one up on Friday, unless you guys want it earlier and just let me know. The bags that are pre-made, those will go out the next day if you order them, if there's mail service. Those will go out the next day. If they're made to order, it is a one to two week wait because, you know, I have a real life and kids and work and gym. Thankfully, I don't have school anymore. Um, what else? Oh. The guild, the big thing I've been working on this past week is my spinning and weaving guild. I'm one of the co-vice presidents, but I'm also kind of the de facto um, web administrator. And um, I'm developing a new web page for our guild to get it out there. So I've been really revamping our website, our guild's website, doing structure and um, doing a framework for that and developing that and all the graphics that go with it and it's just been a lot of fun but it's been a lot of uh, work too so if you guys wanted to check that out um, it's fswguild.org so it stands for the Fredericksburg Spinners and Weavers Guild but it's fswguild all one word dot org you know it's up there I can put that there see right there fswguild.org if you just want to see what I've been up to that that's about it all right everybody that's all I've got this went way longer than I thought because I talked a lot tonight um yeah so I hope you guys have a great week I hope you have a great Valentine's Day that's tomorrow so I hope everybody uh enjoys and gets to spend some time with their loved ones it doesn't have to be a honey just a loved one um somebody that's there for you uh, so have a great week. Don't forget to vote. It's a big grand finale next week. I feel like, ah, 
so yeah, don't forget to vote for uh, February 20th. I'll close the uh, thread and then we'll be moving on. So thank you for coming by. I hope you have a great week. Bye. Mm -hmm.